Welcome one and all to a new episode of my RPG podcast. Today's episode, we're going to be talking about character themes. And we're going to be doing this with Aiden Chan, who's a fantastic composer, most notably known for his compositions for the Critical Role show on Twitch. Now, before we jump into the podcast, I just want it to be known that uh, there's going to be a little bit of a buzz in the interview uh, that I have with Aiden. Uh, We did a sound test and nothing came up, but somehow a buzz kind of got in there while we were recording. Um, I still think it's a fantastic episode, and if you just bear through with me, I think you'll have a good time. Now, also before we jump in, I'd like to go to some of our kind of community content uh, on the Twitter. That's at classy underscore Don, D-O-N. I always pose a topic out there to the community, and I try to get as many of the responses in on the podcast as possible. So in this episode, I asked the people if they had any sort of theme songs for their characters. So I got uh, two responses here. The first one is from Reddit. The user's name is Pohatu underscore. He says, or she says, in my campaign, our characters don't really have theme songs per se, but if we do something really cool or the situation is relevant, the DM will usually play a meme song for that moment. For example, All Star was played during our first ogre fight. Another time, I was dead set on landing the final blow on a boss. The DM told me that if I, a wizard, could kill it with a melee strike, he'd play any song until it finished. The bard shouted out, feels thick ink and i went with that sure enough i managed to kill that boss with a melee attack through some very clever party maneuvers and we got to explore and loot the rest of the dungeon to a coup singing about extra thick that's actually a fantastic story thank you pohatu underscore from reddit now from twitter we have my good friend jens reineking at mr grok and roll jens says that his character Eris is a monk with the soul of a bard. Performing is the deepest expression of his identity. The ability to kill people with his bare hands is just a side effect of his stage training and a handy way to defend himself when traveling from town to town. And he says he would probably pick the song Sing by the Pentatonics. So if anyone out there is interested in having your stories and or sound clips be featured on the show, you can contact me on Twitter at at classy underscore Don, that's Don spelled D-O-N, or send an email to the myrpgpodcast at gmail.com address. Thank you very much, and let's begin this episode with Aiden Chan. Welcome one and all to a new episode of My RPG Podcast. Today's guest is Aiden Chen. Aiden, will you please introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Aiden Chen. Uh, I'm a composer, um, but also a huge, huge nerd. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much uh, pretty me. Yeah, fantastic. All right. Well, we're going to jump into your experience with RPGs in just a second, Aiden. But okay. before that, I kind of want to know your kind of background, who you are, what do you like, what type of hobbies or things you like to do? Um, okay. Um, I am based in Texas right now. Um, and uh, truth be told, I haven't been playing D&D or like actual D&D for uh, too long. Uh, my now wife... Um, actually introduced uh, D&D to me like two years ago, um, during which time I got into Critical Role and and, and whatnot. Um, But yeah, uh, I don't know. But ever since I got into like D&D, I've been, it's pretty much taken over my life. Like uh, it's it's given me so much inspiration for my music and uh, pretty much 99% of my music right now is fantasy or some kind of rpg based uh and yeah uh as for other hobbies um uh i guess uh 
video games do they count as other hobbies <laughs> or no, that, that's not absolutely as... fine yeah. <laughs> or do they count as uh uh rpgs as well um uh yeah i don't um it's just because i'm so busy uh and and the fact that i'm trying to marry my my main hobby you know rpgs dnd tabletop with my profession um i i, I pretty much uh rpgs are pretty much my main hobby if, if, if we can if, if i can even call it that anymore so yeah yeah well i mean I, like you mentioned video games i think are a fantastic kind of gateway into just the general idea of an rpg we yeah. all obviously know about mmorpgs and jrpgs and all those types of video games so what were, what were your first kind of taste of rpgs in the video game sense um oh in the video game sense well definitely wow uh i was um i was kind of addicted in uh middle and high school um and then i kind of weaned off of it uh and uh throughout middle and high school i've i've played some form of D anyway but there was no dice rolling involved. It was really weird, like purely role playing kind of thing, uh, which sounds really nerdy coming out of my mouth right now. Uh, but yeah, uh, as far as video game go, video games go, um, uh, pretty much WoW is my was kind of the gateway to the RPG realm. Um, and then as soon as Skyrim came out, that was that was another that was another one. Um, couldn't stop playing, and and yeah, yeah. So those two were. The, were the big ones so yeah you have this basis in video games and you kind of hinted on it a little bit earlier when you're talking about your wife getting into critical role but was that your first experience ever to a tabletop rpgs was the critical role um not exactly no um i used to paint uh warhammer 40k minis um but it was just purely from like a uh uh me a, a wannabe artist standpoint um yeah like like yeah back again this was back in my middle school high school days and that was uh just uh trying my hand in so many different things so yeah that was my first like sort of tabletop experience was warhammer 40k um and 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 then yeah uh, uh there was a yeah there was a a, a big break between 40k and D D. um but you know again thanks thanks to my wife for introducing uh, D and D to me, uh, you know. Now I, I, I play D and D like, like crazy. <laughs> yeah, and while you were doing this, I'm assuming uh, you were also doing music as well on the side, because you know you are a, a musician yourself and composer. Were you learning music just because of school requirements or personal like goal, or how did uh, that come to be? Uh, well, I, uh, I started, I started off playing violin actually, and you know, being your typical. Asian I started playing when I was like three uh, <laughs> so it, it was always a it was always a, a violin's always been a part of my life and, and music in general um, and you know by the time I got to like junior senior year um, of high school I uh, kind of uh, I, I you, you know you know with with, with, with uh, university applications and grades and whatnot I kind of realized like Music is like the the thing, the only thing that I am truly passionate about. Like I can be good at other stuff, but like music is really the only thing that I like. Um, so yeah, that's that's why I pursued music. And even 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 going to music school, uh, going to university, uh, 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 I started off. Um, I, actually, I'm still in college, um, and uh, I started off uh, as a violin. Uh, performance major uh still am trying to finish that um but uh you know because any kind of performance program is so intense uh i actually got a shoulder injury uh and i need uh, physical therapy for that so um it, it kind of it kind of set me back uh, both technically and just you know uh, in terms of my passion for performing and so i kind of got into composition and at first it was it was hard because i was like doing like pure music if you know what i mean like just trying to come up with stuff just because uh but you know as soon as i started doing um uh, uh you know fan music with critical role or just rpg music in general it, it, it really gave me an outlet to 
uh, the uh, what, what one of my friends who works in the industry calls uh, uh, allowed me to become a genre creative. Um, so yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, just a personal question here because I'm a bit of a music buff myself. What were your favorite type of pieces to play? Because I know the part of the lexicon of violin, you're going to get your Italians, your Vivaldi's, and your Paganini's. But what was yes. your favorites? Um, well, uh, I was I was always drawn to uh, less like strictly classical pieces. Um, uh, so you know, uh, folk inspired classical pieces. You know, like uh, by uh, dang, what's he called? Uh, uh, oh, like uh, Pablo Sarasate. You know, Scottish oh, yeah. fantasy. Um, what else? Uh, ooh. Um, Percy Granger's Molly on the Shore, which I'm actually going to be performing um, in my senior recital. But, you know, that aside, uh, you know, like just just less traditional classical pieces were like my go to. Uh, so, yeah. Now transitioning over. So you got into the show Critical Role. What's the big leap between like, hey, this is a fun show and D&D seems like a cool thing to I want to compose for these characters in the show? Um. There wasn't really a transition. Um, it, it, it's kind of like it's it's just kind of how my brain works. I'll, I'll watch a show and my brain will immediately start piecing together notes and imagining what it would sound like to like what this character would sound like musically. Um, and I guess that stems from um, you know whenever I was younger and I would uh, listen to movie soundtracks, and I think. I think the biggest influence would be, you know, Hans Zimmer's stuff on Pirates. Like, that was my first, that was pretty much my first CD. Like, physical CD was buying the Pirates of the Caribbean soundtrack and then hearing, seeing, you know, Jack Sparrow's theme. And then I'd be like, oh, okay, so people can have themes. And, like, so ever since a a young age, I've been, I've I've just been instinctively imagining themes for, 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 characters on shows I watch so you know it just came naturally when I started watching Critical Role. So it's kind of like a version of Synthesia which for those who don't know is that some people have this thing to where when they hear sound they can process it as colors or shapes or things like that. Yeah yeah I actually know a couple of people who have Synthesia uh, yeah it's it's really interesting uh, when you think about it. So right off the bat you knew you wanted to create these themes and things like that Oh, yeah. What what was the, probably the most exciting slash maybe most harrowing thing about that? Were you was worried about legality? Was it worried about getting it out there? Um, tr- no. Uh, I mean, before I did, I, before I uh, started posting my compositions um, on YouTube, I, I did, uh, I did, uh, you know, like violin covers of popular, popular music, uh, and. You know, so legality was never a thing with me. I, I knew the right words to say to kind of, you know, bypass that. And, uh, and you know, after watching a couple episodes, I knew, like, okay, these guys are nice. Like, even if they, even if I did, you know, tread on some feet legally, like, they'd probably just say, hey, can you not do that? And I'd be like, yeah, I, I won't do that. But, you know, that hasn't happened, so yay. Um, as far as... Uh, uh, hmm. I'm sorry, could you repeat this? the other part of your question? Sure, sure, sure. So I was asking for what was the most exciting or most harrowing, like mm. what were you afraid mm-hmm. of and what were you excited to get into? Yes, yes. Yeah, the harrowing part, um, the thing that was most harrowing was uh, just the sheer amount of characters <laughs> there were. Like, there were, they were uh, at the time when I decided I'm going to you know, do these things, uh, there were eight characters. Uh, and then I was just, I, I uh, by the time I finished, like, the first four, I was like, oh, my God, I'm, ugh, there's so much work to be done still. Um, so, so yeah, that was the most, the, 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 just the sheer volume was the harrowing part. But just um, the most, I guess the most exciting part, and it kind of just trumps everything, with, is just uh, how, how much I get to be in control creatively. Like, I, it, it's just, it's so exciting. Every time I start a new theme or... Uh, every time I get a new idea that just pops into my head, like it, 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 it gets me riled up, man. It's, it's super exciting. Like I'll be like, Oh yeah, I can, this, this can go with this character's theme. This can go with that other character's theme. This can be a location theme. Like 
yeah, so so just the conceptualizing, I guess, is the most exciting part. Yeah, and it seems like for you, it's the the motifs and the themes that that comes, I guess, easiest, and then you build around that. Is that safe to say? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. I'm I'm very much a a. a, a I, yeah, so like you said, a motif guy. Um, uh, I guess it's a little reactionary to the soundtracks um, we've been hearing lately. Um, I I would say in the la- within the last five to ten years. Um, I mean, if you listen to like movie and video game soundtrack, they're getting progressively less themey. Um, I mean, uh, just think of uh, just think of uh, uh, let's say Dark Knight for like uh, the bat. Uh, uh, Christopher Nolan Batman uh, movie soundtrack, for mm-hmm. example, like other than those two notes. Yeah, you mean the French horns, the dun yeah, dun. The, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. other than those two notes, everything else you kind of you can you can put you can plug that into Daredevil and it'll work. So, um, uh, I guess yeah. So like uh, reiterating what I said before, uh, uh, my I, I guess my style, if you will, is very much reactionary to what's happening in um, uh, uh, soundtrack uh, at this point. Yeah, and what's interesting, you know, just for a little bit of history there, is the video games being able to evolve to have more orchestral or more, uh, more, you know, just symphonic sound comes from also just a technical standpoint. Yeah. Uh, I know that reading from a lot of like the old school, especially Nintendo, SNES era, themes that just because of the technical um, limitations due to what they could do, you could only have so many instruments or only so many sounds at one time, which is why yeah. someone, so, so many of those themes and melodies are, are very, I'm, try, I'm trying to find the right word that, that I can comp- com- compare to somebody who doesn't understand theory, but they sound very uh, lively and they're out there and they're very busy and they're very yeah. strong single themes. Whereas yeah. if you were to listen to more modern music, you'll have a lot of counterpoint and maybe play off of different instruments and stuff yes, like you would yes, at a symphony. Yeah, much more subtle now. Um, and um, yeah, I, I, I agree. Like, uh, I, I'm not... Uh, let's say, let's say, uh, I don't want to say eight bit music, but um, old. Let's say older video game music is uh, is ha- it has its place, and I agree, it is a little too upbeat at times for my taste. Um, at the same time, I feel like uh, this current, you know, let's make everything subtle um, movement, quote unquote, um, starting to get a little old for me. So, like. Uh, with with the Skyrim soundtrack, um, that has always been to me the pinnacle of video game soundtracks. Like it it, it took the the themey aspects of of um, you know older video games or or, or film soundtrack, um, but also uh, mixed it with more subtle ways to uh, incorporate them instead of just using the subtle elements or just using the theme elements. It was a, it was a nice marriage of the two. So uh, that's what I'm trying to get at with, with my music. Uh, so, yeah. And it's funny you should mention uh, liking Skyrim so much because as, as you mentioned this Pirates uh, Caribbean soundtrack earlier, yes. the, the, those those melodies for the Skyrim theme or just the Elder Scrolls kind of general theme and the yeah. Pirates theme have kind of the same shape. And uh, I know we're an audio podcast here, but everybody, I want you kind of to imagine, imagine some hills and valleys for a second. If you listen to a lot of Hans Zimmer and John Williams, like you can do this with Hedwig's theme from Harry Potter as well, and especially at the I'm a Pirate theme from Pirates of the Caribbean. They kind of do this thing where you have your first hump, you, you rescind, you have a second hump a little bit higher than the first, you rescind, and then you have this big, gigantic leap up for this really epic point of the melody, and then it resolves off onto the fourth, which if you now think... I, I, this is where I'll probably go in and do some audio where I'll play a little bit of the themes and you'll hear what I'm saying. So I'll pause right, right now. And if you hear that 
at the same time, kind of in the third iteration of each theme, it kind of jumps up there on the scale and also kind of jumps up there in impact and then resolves on the fourth. So I thought that, that was interesting that you mentioned liking pirates so much. And then you mentioned, of course, Skyrim, because the two have that very similar yes, shape of a exactly. melody. Yeah. yeah, well spotted, well spotted. <laughs> So we're creating these themes now for Critical, and yeah. you're, um, you have so many characters to look at. Mm -hmm. What was probably the easiest theme to come up with, and what was the one where you're like, mm, that's going to take me some time? Um, ooh, that's, a, that's a toughie. Um, I would say the easiest theme to come up with, and, and this was just the theme, not the actual the entire piece itself but the easiest thing to come up with is scanlands which i haven't I, I still haven't released yet it's not done but like i've had that theme um uh, you know on my computer for for uh, over a little over a year now um so that was the easiest to come up with just because um i don't know i don't have a favorite character but it's i guess it's just because he's a He's the bard, and you know I'm a musician, and it was just easy to uh, uh, come up with a, a sort of medieval esque uh, a tune, like like folk tune for him. And so yeah, uh, Scanlands was the easiest. Um, uh, I, but of all the uh, of all the ones that I have released, I would say. Uh, uh, I would say Pikes was um, ne is next in, in line in terms of the easiest to come up with and the easiest to, to uh, flesh out um, just because uh, Pikes theme, I intentionally made a little bit more classical. Um, and uh, yeah, like it, it was, you know, because of my training, um, it, it was just easy to sort of go from you know, theme A to theme B, you know, subject A to subject B, and uh, uh, do transitional material, and uh, you know, yeah. Yeah, um, and as musicians, like, uh, for, for those of you who are musicians out there, you understand this if you've learned theory or went to school, and those who haven't, you know, we do have a little, like, template. We have kind of guidelines when you're learning music theory. You learn about, you know, scales and modes and the circle of fifths and what resolves and what doesn't resolve and a dominant cadence, a subdominant cadence, and all these right, things right. to where, like, even if you didn't have an instrument on you, if I told you what key we're in, I could come up with a chord progression that flows. I could know which notes to land on to you know, transition or when I need to do a key change, I know what to do. So basically, Aiden right. was talking about how kind of going back to the, the literature and the uh, training you've had up until this point. Yeah, 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 exactly. Exactly uh, what you said. Um, yeah, and that's why Pike's theme, apart from Scantlands, uh, is, was the easiest to come up with. Um, yeah. Now, one of my favorite themes, I'm just going to put my two cents here. Hold on, hold on. Let me guess. Is it Percy's theme? How did you know? Because it's everyone's fucking favorite. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, I have to admit it. that that Because it's the Sherlock-esque harpsichord yeah, and the violin. Yeah. And then you, you go into that sweeping... I imagine myself over the, the rooftops of you know whitestone in percy's case or obviously in sherlock's case of right. london with the the kind of fog meets yeah, the, yeah. the clouds and the darkness and yeah <laughs> like you nailed that so well that that theme is so well that yeah i i have a love-hate relationship with that theme i i both i i love it because every y'all y'all love it so much so thank you um and i also loved it because uh, uh i think it's the it uh, it, it's the it's the one right after Pike that was the easiest to come to, to flesh out. Um, and uh, but I also hate it because because everyone loves it uh, so much, so much more than all my other ones. Oh and yeah, I see. What you I also mean. hate hate it because um because I had to uh and and uh I don't know how I don't know how pertinent this would be, but I also. I also kind of hated uh, recording it because of my shoulder injury. I had to I had to play all the, the solo violin parts because you can't get that kind of sound on the, through 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 MIDI. Um, yeah, via VST, no VST mimics the attack you get from an actual violin actual, or anything actual like that. Violin, yeah, exactly. So yeah, I had to, I had to record it myself, and uh, you know, I hurt myself a little 
bit uh, recording it. So you're, you're welcome, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I have a, a love hate relationship with that with that with that theme. <laughs> yeah, well, it makes me appreciate the theme a little bit more to know that you 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 pained over this this violent. Yeah, I busted my ass over it. <laughs> Well, well, one of the things I was going to mention, I, I think also is really, really fun about your themes is you have this ability and maybe because you're also a fan as well to add in the subtle nuances like with Grog's theme, kind of adding the, the chanting there, which I, I think you said also hurt your throat a little bit. Was that right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, uh, Grog's theme is not one of those that is not done yet. And I sort of hit a bump with um, just because I have so many ideas flooding in from the new campaign and whatnot. Um, but yeah, uh, Grog's theme, I was doing a, a haka chant. Um, so that's, uh, for those of you who don't know, it's like a, a New Zealand Maori uh, traditional chant. Not necessarily a war chant. Uh, it's just their, their, their way of expressing, musically expressing um, themselves. And I thought, you know, um, Goliaths are, are, are a little tribal and they're, uh, he's a barbarian too. So I, so I, did, I chose a haka. And um, uh, in D and D, at least, uh, giants tend to be tend to steer towards like um, Norse Jotun uh, culture. So I wrote a haka in Icelandic, broken Icelandic, I think, because uh, I used I used Google Translate and only had it proofread by like two two. Uh, s- oh, one of them was Swedish, one of them was Icelandic, but yeah, I had it proofread. But you know, still. The grammar, the, the the grammar of those languages are very hard. So, uh, but yeah, and I recorded myself uh, over and over to sort of build that, um, uh, if you would visualize um, an army of Goliaths behind Grog. That that was what I was going for. The army, the the visual that went with that's supposed to go with that theme when it gets done uh, is supposed to be Grog leading an army of of Goliaths and they would chant the the haka um, for him and so yeah I heard my voice I, I coughed up a, a teeny little bit of, of irony tasting spit um, after recording the haka uh, and now that I'm thinking about it I think I need to go back and record even more uh, voices just to get that thickness <laughs> I was gonna say, please don't hurt yourself. I, I, I'll reference you to some guys who I played heavy metal with, who, will, who can help you out on that. So maybe you don't. Uh... Which is funny because I, 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 I used to in in high school. I used to be in a metal band, and I was the vocalist. And... Oh, dude, we got to talk metal now. I didn't know about this because <laughs> yes, I do. too was in high school in a metal band. Nice. And I also released uh, yeah. instru- instrumental uh, two instrumental albums. So. Oh, nice. So you want to talk about themes and a person who, who likes likes all that stuff. So where did this heavy metal thing come from? It's got to have a name. What was the name? Um, okay, so we were uh, we were Voltura at first, um, and the founding members wanted us to pretty much be a uh, you know Avenge Sevenfold ripoff. Uh, okay. Which, All right. Which, 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 in my opinion, doesn't really constitute as metal, but whatever. <laughs> um, and then we, uh, the two founding members left because they had to, you know, because we were in school and we decided to go to school in France. So we changed. We got. We got. We pretty much reformed the band and changed our name to Leptus Magda, and and then we started doing much more new metal. Um, not too like the metal we played wasn't too heavy um so like the heaviest we got was probably and this was just because it was fun but the heaviest we got was probably gateways by demu Bourgier. oh man that's a fantastic track though Uh, i like that song but yeah yeah so because of the the my brief stint with metal um i kind of knew the technique to use um to, to get growls and screams in um, but you know just because I was out of practice and um, it's 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 stressful on the voice yeah uh, even with the diaphragm the, if you yeah if you do the, it from the diaphragm it the, still hurts. the session the session just eventually became you know my my, my technique just just declined throughout the, the that recording session for, for growling theme so so yeah <laughs> that's why I hurt myself yeah, so when this Grog theme drops, everyone, you better appreciate the hell out of this man because of what he's putting <laughs> himself through. 
yeah uh hopefully yeah uh, i mean my 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 goal since percy's theme has been to top percy's theme so <laughs> so everything post percy's theme i have poured my heart and soul into to try to get the numbers past percy's theme <laughs> i think that's a worthy challenge but i i'll be really impressed to hear this one it finally does uh, come out oh yeah I'm, it'll it'll get done but right now I'm, I'm just working on uh, the group theme for the new campaign, uh, which is super fun. Um, wasn't, wasn't, wasn't too easy to come up with, but it's, uh, I, I think once it's done, it would be, it would become my favorite. So we've talked a lot about you making these themes. When in all this, did you ever try D and D or RPGs yourself? Um, okay. So, uh, 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 I don't. I think I don't think we've established my my history uh, earlier earlier in the interview. Um, but it was I actually started. Um, I played D and D for like a month before I started watching Critical Role. And by play, I mean um, my wife um, threw me in the deep end and said, "All right, you're DMing." And that was my first ever D and D experience. Wow! Wow! Oh man, I'm sorry. That sound I made was was, was like fear. The sound of fear. Yeah, it was. It was scary. And I started watching Matt Mercer, uh, uh, in his other in his Nerdist um, uh, show. What was it called? Uh, uh, Force, Force Gray. Gray. Yeah. Force Gray. Yeah, I started watching that to get DM tips, like just to see like how how someone. DMs, right? Um, excuse me. Yeah, I was just trying to see how someone DMs, and uh, yeah, uh, and then I started watching Critical Role, um, and I got an even better idea of how to DM. So I would say I technically started playing D anD D before I, a month or so before I started watching Critical Role, but really, I really got a D anD I would say maybe two, three episodes into. Uh, watching so you started as a dm but what was your first character that you ever got to play as a pc or did you ever get to play as a pc um no i did not so you've been dming this whole time i've been dming this whole time i mean i've I played uh one or two one shots uh every now and then but i pretty much use my npcs that i that i that i create like i, I like creating npcs as 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 pc characters just because you know, it's they're more fleshed out that way, uh, and you know I have a terrible habit of role playing like like crazy, so so yeah. Um, but I guess technically my first PC character would be he he's a bard, just cause. <laughs> I mean, you have to do it. You have to do it as a musician. Bards are fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I was a bard. I was. Uh, I, uh, he's called. Um, he was called Targa in Arith. Um, he was a, uh, tiefling, um, I forget what his, I haven't played him in so long, I forget what his, uh, alignment was, and I forget what his background was, but he was pretty much the, he was pretty much Gilmore from Critical Role, except he had a loot with him the entire time, instead of running a, you know, magical menagerie shop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was my first, technically my first PC. <laughs> yeah, you know, t tieflings and bards and, and, and instruments like to go together hand in hand. I had the pleasure of having one of my players play a uh, tiefling bard by the name of Memphis, last name Toffoles. Nice. Memphis nice. Toffoles is his full name. Nice, nice. And of course, it was one of those things where it's like the double bluff of like, I... Is, is he really going to play a, a fiddle? Because he was a violinist. Is he really going to play a fiddle player? tiefling mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. the, you you know the 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 whole like signing a deal with the devil thing is like no 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 it's not that but is it that but it's not yeah, that. Right. but it yeah. was that it was that yeah. we were doing the double bluff <laughs> we were doing nice. the double bluff he was secretly evil the entire time but yeah so gotcha. so yeah i think it's funny how how uh we have we, we have a tendency to associate devils and violins and uh tiefling right. violinists or musicians comes together perfectly right, right. yeah no, my, i know my i i tried to play my bard as like, uh, uh, 
we like to call well i like to call my bard uh, very bard sexual and <laughs> so i i like to play that aspect of, of my bard but i tried to steer away from like your stereotypical like um uh, uh i guess bard abilities like uh, uh, uh i guess we would call them so um he always started off like with um i tried to marry like scanlan's like uh comedy based bard with uh, a more like tribal uh, uh, uh you know war drum um war drum hitting kind of bard uh and eventually uh uh targer evolved into a almost like a black bolt type situation where uh you know he would uh, try to use whispering as a means of channeling his 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 power and, and whatnot, and you know just just really trying to push the envelope in terms of what a bard can do. So I gotta ask. I mean, being a musician and somebody who composes themes now in the fantasy and RPG genre, do you yeah. have music involved in your game? What do you like to play? Um, okay, so uh, when I DM, I pretty much pull from every single soundtrack film or video game uh that i like uh most recently i've been heavily using witcher and skyrim um which i i believe is pretty much what matt uses in critical role uh uh and uh i do i i do have a couple of of uh pieces that uh i've composed that i'm kind of tweaking still um but i i do plan to use uh you know transition over to using my music mostly if not exclusively that's awesome and you yeah. know i'm very much the same way um for me it was a lot of uh harry potter chamber of secrets uh video game nice. it was uh, nice. composed by journey shoals who you guys will know if you look up his credits he's done a lot of other great games and i loved that growing up as a kid so i try to incorporate as many of those themes into the things i do especially because i have a magic school and i just ran we just started a magic school campaign so i was like oh i'm going to harry potter the shit out of this <laughs> so, so, so i got to do a lot of great themes there um, yeah. I, I do, Aiden, I do some of your themes as well. I have um, Vax and uh, Percy's in my world. It, one of one nice. in Percy's in particular is the theme for a certain part of my world, <laughs> which fits in the aesthetic of, uh, you know, the, kind of the uh, London grimy type. Yeah, of, I guess everyone kind of has, uh, uh, has, a, has, a, has a gothic sort of setting in, within their, in their games and I guess that's and why. everyone has a desert setting and then everybody yeah. has their Nordic mountain tribes yep. and like, yep. yeah, it's, it's kind of the funny thing that we all share because of all the culture and the media and the mythologies that we were all brought up on. We all kind yeah. of, regardless of what our individual world, worlds are established to be, everybody has your, you know, your bazaar and your sand dune area and yep. everybody has your yep. aqua Atlantean people. Like it's all there. Yep. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, like even yeah, that that, that hits that. Yep, <laughs> that's a perfect, perfect like uh, observation right there. Yeah, I have nothing to add. <laughs> no, no, and like I mean, I could just vamp on that if I wanted to because like for me it was so much fun to because I'm so heavily about the music. Like I even asked the characters every character to have a theme song. So I could be like, you know, when oh, I nice. when I do the how you want to do this, I want to blast your theme and let you have that moment of glory. Or like when you're doing something important to your character, doing something really awesome, I want you to nice. feel that excitement. And also like I, 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 I guess I'm a little bit obsessive in that regard. I wanted to make sure that I could kind of psychologically pull the strings on my characters if I wanted them to feel a certain way. So when I'm in a certain city, that's that city's theme. You're like, oh man, we're here in Adina, or oh man, here we are in Vin Wintervale, as opposed to, oh no, we're now in the Shadowfell and we're here in Gloomrot. Like, I know that theme, I hate that theme. Or nice. uh, or like, you know, it's that's, a... That's, yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's really, like, advanced... Uh, uh, I, I call it soundboarding, but yeah, that's that's really advanced DMing there. Uh well, I do it to compensate for my other f f faults, all right? I'm not that oh, great at yeah. accents. So I'm like, if I can't do really cool shit uh, otherwise, I'm going to make up for it by right, having right. a really extensive, like, musical, like, when you're sneaking, this is the theme. When you're doing this, right, this is the right. theme. I mean, I mean, that's it. I mean, the way you're describing it, it's, it's, almost, it's almost like your players are playing a video game. Like, you know, when you play, like, say, WoW or 
or Skyrim or something, right? Uh, you go into a certain area and you hear the theme. You're like, oh, I know this area. Like, uh, or uh, you know, or, or oh, I hate this area. Or oh, this this particular enemy is coming. Like, yeah. So that's it, it, that's really good stuff, man. I might might steal that. Oh, no, please, <laughs> please, please do. And uh, what I try to do also sometimes is. And this is something all I think DMs do. There's a lot of in jokes and Easter eggs your par- your characters will never get, but to you it makes you smile or like feel right. really, really great. So like if they go right. into a bar and there's a violin that plays itself and it's run by a tiefling, uh-huh. the 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 tune or the theme I'm p- picking is Devil's Trill. Or you know if they're if they're meeting a oh nice right right so like <laughs> or, or or if they're meeting you know let's let's say uh, a kind of my Nordic inspired things like that I might go back through you know all of my music and be like all right well what games had Nordic themes in it like Skyrim or things like that and let me right. pepper this in now I always go into my my sound uh, software and I change it just a little bit so it's not like on the nose so like they went right. into the Shadowfell and they went into like a vampire run um, music hall which was eighties mm-hmm. uh, not eighties nineties uh, euro trash stuff so basically i just took a i, t- I just took a, a like a trance theme that's the the main vocal in the entire song is uh, i'll give you pleasure i just reversed okay. that i added some reverb and i did some weird stuff bumped up the bass and like so now it's still a oomts, 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 and there's this weird uh, like that thing in the background oh, geez. which dang yeah that's that, that, that's that's very that's uh yeah, I'm, I'm, again, I'm, I'm going to have to steal that. <laughs> Take it away. Like part of being a DM and part of being a musician is, you know, great artists uh, borrow, good artists steal. And same thing can be said about DMs. Guys, if you if you hear anything, anything I say that's worth a damn or anything my guests say, I will. I, I'm, I'm speaking for you, Aiden, but I'm pretty sure <laughs> you feel we want to help as many people as possible. Yeah, 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 I agree. Yeah. So that's dope. All right. So we mentioned the current themes, and I know you're at work with that, and we can't wait for them all to get done when you can. Yeah. But you, the new show's out, man. What are you loving about the new show so far? By the way, as of the time of recording, everyone, we're three episodes in. So uh, this might be a little bit of a spoilers for up to episode three, but what do you like so far about the new campaign? Um, I guess this is a little meta, but just how, you know, because the cast has played certain characters for uh you know x amount of time and it's my favorite part is just seeing you know their preconceived roles switched with each other you know how um ashley's uh playing yasha who is a barbarian and uh uh uh, grog uh, his real name is travis travis is playing um fjord who is a you know a texan warlock like the the two dynamics are just completely different. And, you know, to me, that is the, uh, not just creatively, but, you know, just as a, as a fan, that is, that is, you know, some of the most interesting things about the new, the new campaign to me right now. Yeah. And I'm really excited when, uh, if you play a campaign long enough and you play with a group of people for long enough, you kind of get an idea of what they are like when they're playing a certain type of character. So then when you start yeah. from scratch all over again, there's this fun excitement about like, oh my God, I have no idea what you're going to bring to the table. And I don't yeah. know what the dynamic of the group's going to be. So even as a DM, there's this excitement about like, man, this is going to be messy and awkward and a bit bumpy for the first few sessions. But I'm really excited to see what we end up doing. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's, um, uh, yeah, with even with the new theme that I'm, I'm doing for the group right now, it's, uh, I would say it's, the 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 switch, uh, the all the switches of of uh, in terms of the characters and you know just the I would call I would call it the atmosphere of you know the gameplay in general. Um, it's really it's really grounded by by uh, compositions as of late. Um, in terms of it's it's bringing us back, bringing me back down to you know my roots, my fascination with folkier uh, music and um and yeah and we really have a gift because of uh each of our own individual experiences we can kind of bring to the table and we can also bring to the way we write music me being eastern european i have a fascination obviously with that uh, weird mix of 
the Eastern Arabic influences and then the Western right. Slavic polka things. So when I play right. guitar or I do anything, I love to hear that. So when you mentioned the Witcher series, I fell in love with the Witcher series and that music yeah. because of that rings true to me the same yeah. way uh, this kind of new campaign, according to Matt, is set in a Eastern European meets Germanic area. So your folk background lends perfectly to that with your kind of folk. Exactly, yeah. And like Witcher, I use a shit ton of bagpipes. Uh, <laughs> um, as a lot of... Uh, and I guess these are spoilers for the themes, but who cares? Uh, there's going to be a lot of, uh, you know, balalaika and loot and just non non traditional, uh, you know, non typically Western, quote unquote, um, sounding elements in, in these next uh, upcoming games. Okay, I'm I'm looking forward to the like tuba throat singing. Though. I, I I have a place in my world where I have tuba throat singing and it sh- uh-huh. shocked the shit out of my campaign. And I really uh-huh. want to see somebody like do a D and D stream and all of a sudden you're in like a very kind of. Man, you know Mongolian style influence, right. and then all of a sudden, you're like, uh, that's actually oh, in oh. That's actually in Grog's theme. I actually put put a little bit of that to the uh, throw scene. Um, some of it is sampled, but some of it is just me trying to beef up the sample. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when it's released. You'll, you'll, you'll get your two singing I, it sounds like I'm gonna love Grog's theme because he's got the heavy metal meets the haka meets the tuba stuff. Like it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, and I, I uh, speaking of heavy metal, there are some guitar in Grog's theme, which is a little different to all the other themes that I've done. Um, and the guitar is just inspired by, uh, you know, History Channel's Vikings. You know, there, it's it's not purely classical or, or, or folk. There, there's some modern electronic uh, slash rock elements in, in the soundtrack. And so, you know, I, I, I try to pull those elements and put it in the Grog theme as well. Yeah, this is going to be an amazing amalgamation of, like, folk metal meets all these other aspects. I can't wait for yeah. this theme. Folk, orchestral, Eastern European, Scandinavian metal, yeah, <laughs> music. <laughs> That's brilliant, man. You do a lot of fun things. Why don't you promote your streams a little bit? Because I know you do a lot of streaming as well. Um, uh, I don't do so much uh, lately just because I'm so busy, but... Uh, I do plan to resume them, and uh, my mainstream uh, streams right now is um, Critical Tunes, which is where, you know, when I have time, I will stream myself uh, composing Critical Role Music. Um, and during the, during the stream, I kind of, you know, I, it's a kind of uh, t- filler mechanism, but I just talk about, you know, the mechanics of the software that I use, which is Logic Pro X. Uh, for any of, any of y'all who are interested, um, you know, and I talk about the, the music stuff, a little bit of theory, and I try to, you know, just relate all that to, to the show. Um, so, yeah, that's Critical Tunes. Um, I, uh, as, as I was streaming Critical Tunes, I did um, get an idea to to stream myself composing other, other music as well. So, I guess, stay tuned for that. Um, i probably announce it on Twitter or whatever. Um, my other stream that I'm kind of working on right now is, uh, it's my D, my own D and D group. Um, and it's called roll, roll check die, um, pun intended. And, uh, it's just a bunch of, uh, stage actors and writers and, uh, a composer playing D and D. So yeah, those are my streams. Yeah, that's brilliant. And if anybody needs to contact you, what's the best way to get to you? Um, you can uh, direct message me on Twitter. Uh, my handle is at Aiden Chan. That's spelled A I D E N C H A N. Um, for those of you who don't have Twitter, uh, you can always uh, email me at Aiden Chan PR at gmail dot com. Um, so Aiden Chan, Chan spelled the same way as my Twitter handle. Uh, and I should get back to you, or I'll try to get back to you as possible. Uh, but Twitter is uh, what I check most and reply to most readily just because, you know, I have it on my phone and I can just type a reply. But yeah. And you can find me at Twitter at Classy underscore Don. You can find this podcast at myrpgpodcast.podbean.com and other places where podcasts can be found. Thank you very much for listening, and I will see you at the table.